Now, I know everybody's been asking themselves the same question. What would you rate X Defiant now that we have a full release or a quote unquote full release, right? For many years in the FPS gaming atmosphere, Call of Duty has been the king, has been the greatest, right? As far as FPS. Even though that game has probably we ain't, ain't going to talk too much on that. We are going to do a lot of comparisons today though. Only because this game likes to compare themselves to Call of Duty. So it's only right. I've played Call of Duty for years. These recent titles, the past 3-4 years. Uh, like I said, for another time, for another video, for another day. Also another year. Here we are, you know, this game, it's been a minute, right? I've played the closed beta, waited, played the open beta, waited, played another open beta, waited, 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 and now here we are at full release. And man, does this game have a lot of elephants in the room that need to be addressed as far as just the game itself right because when you have people waiting so when you have players waiting and they have time to play other games and then you release something so grand on paper but minuscule on actual gameplay features and things like that it becomes a little lackluster it makes you not want to enjoy the game because there's really nothing to enjoy so we're starting this series, and we're going to rate this motherfucker. We're going to rate it. I'm going to do an out of 10 system. I'm going to name everything that's good, along with everything that's bad, in my opinion. And we're going to start off hot. You know, I have to give this game, again, in today's gaming atmosphere, and again, comparing it to Call of Duty. Call of Duty loves to release multiplayer side with a paywall you have to pay $70 to get in there of course you have warzone later on coming for free which i hope this coming black ops 6 they don't include just because i feel like battle royale is a little too oversaturated right now i mean every game wants to do battle royale you know we got to give that shit a break we got to give it a little break we got to get back onto multiplayer the roots 6v6 8v8 ground war you know things that are actually fun things that make you want to play the game not hopping on every day and getting a number one going against 12 hackers in the line we're, we're good on that we're good going back free to play i gotta give it this game x defiant three points right off the bat for being free to play only because i feel like that practice model is the best when it comes to gaming today why do i say that there's gonna be a whole bunch of micro transactions in the game regardless so having no paywall right off the bat for people to come in and play is the best way to get people to play and eventually get people to spend money on your game. If it's free to play, you lose nothing. You just download it on whatever platform you're on. You're playing. If you enjoy it, cool. You're going to spend money. If you don't, cool. You didn't lose out. The only thing you lost was some storage, which you can get back by uninstalling the game. It's real simple. Real simple model. And it actually attracts more players. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I have to right off the bat give it three points. Now, let's get into the actual gameplay 
the way the game feels you, you you're seeing it on screen right now right and i'm pretty sure if you're watching this video you've already played it you have some hours in you probably have a gun or two gold silver i have one gun gold and we'll get into that I'm talking too much we'll get into that this game has a real big arcade feel um almost i want to kind of compare it to like black ops 4 real arcade feel and um for that i'll give it two points because there is a lot of games you know first person shooters that you might get into and it has a little too much realistic features in the game so much that you know you gotta account for oh i just spawned in i gotta reload my gun oh my gun's jammed or there's you know so much recoil on this gun even with all the attachments and that's just a feature that's built into the game because it's quote unquote realistic it's a realistic shooter right and to some that may be fun to me in my honest opinion i like the arcadey feel only because i feel being competitive if, if you're competitive simplicity is key if you keep the game simple it's easy for people to be competitive why because the controls are easy recoil as far as a first person shooter is easy to understand so when you get in a competitive lobby you're playing against people that understand these mechanics understand the recoil patterns understand the movement understand the abilities because it's simple to understand which makes it 10 times more competitive oh i fucked up because i shot the gun wrong you know, I didn't fuck up because the game has a realistic feature where it's a little too realistic. I fucked up because I fucked up. You know, I, I shouldn't have aimed that way. I should have been moving that quick. I shouldn't have done that. So for that, I'll give it another two additional points. Because in my opinion, I like that. I like the arcade feel. Real simple to get into. Get out of. You know, it's, it's a simple gameplay loop that keeps you coming back if you like it. If you don't, you're going to leave early. Just like stated before with the free to play. That being said, as much time as we waited for this game to release, it's only been out for, I want to say, a week, a week and a half, two weeks. I have to take off a point because in 2024, a mix of the graphics and how simple the game is, I have to take off another point. You hit the mark on an arcade shooter, but you didn't hit the mark on the release date that you came out with this arcade shooter. A little too late a very very late especially in 2024 we we have major titles coming out that have way better graphics way better mechanics and you come up with this i don't know about all that but going on to our next point that i have to give is the operators they fit perfectly in this atmosphere of the game you know, Ubisoft really hit a, a good mark on a first-person shooter and their idea behind it. You know, you have all these factions which are from different titles within Ubisoft. You have Echelon, you have Libertad, you have so many different factions that tie in so good into the game. You know, they, they tie in really good. I love that. You have Dead Sec. You know, and most of us have played a lot of these Ubisoft games. I have also seen cer certain leaks online. They're bringing in the Assassin's Creed faction, which we'll see how that plays. We'll see how that ties into the game, but that sounds dope. That's a dope idea. Really good idea. But this is the problem. I gave operators one point, or you know, characters, factions, whichever one you want to consider. I just gave them a point for that. But then I had to take off a half a point because <clears throat> When it comes to a gameplay feature as a player, even though these characters are all cool, there's no lock on a character. There's no lock on the amount of each character you can have on one set team. So what happens is when you've already played for 10, 15, 20 hours, you're seeing the same characters because people are only using those characters that they know are good in this game. Libertad is one of them, the healer chick that's the only character you're really gonna see if you don't see her or the guy variation of that character in that faction you're gonna see the goggle guy the echelon group which is more from like the tom clancy's uh ghost Re not ghost recon i forgot what the hell the, the game is called splinter cell i believe that's the only characters you're gonna see running around you know and there's no limitation on how much 
players can choose those said characters on one team. So it, it, it comes to a point where you're either going up against a whole team of Ghost Recon motherfuckers with the shield, or you're going up a, a, a whole you're going against a whole team with healing motherfuckers. And as a player, that becomes so lame after a while. There's no variation. There's no difference. There's no limitation. So they're going to do it every game that you come into and you play. Now, on our next point, the maps. And I chose to put this point right after the characters, operators, factions, whichever whichever wording you want to put them under. They tie in together so perfectly, right? You have great operators, factions, characters and then you have great maps to play on and in my opinion the maps play and flow super well on this game there's never a time where there's not one point of the map that's not being used especially if you play the game mode hot shot right super fun super fast paced there's always somebody on one point of the map either sniping smg ar shotgun there's just so much variation there as far as weapons and maps so for that i tied them in together and i'm giving that one whole point no complaints there feels super good enjoyable fun but then we tie into more things right day one unlockables the game came out and it seems like the store and the battle pass had more to unlock than the actual game itself and I know I said earlier, free to play, right? We were we were already expecting this. It's free to play. And that's why I started hot. Free to play, three points. But when you have a game that releases and there's no actual content to unlock in-game, apart from a couple of characters and unlocking the guns that are already in the game that we've already used in beta, nothing new, I got to take off a half a point. I have to. I have to. I got to shave off and I got to G you on a 0.5. I got to G you on a dime. I have to. Only because that gameplay loop is so redundant and gets boring so fast. There is nothing to unlock. When you want to talk about camos, right? And that's also another 0.5. I, I, I didn't. I ain't changing that up. But we'll get into that fully right now. But when you want to talk about a camo grind or a level grind, there has to be something tied towards it. You know, if I'm going for a level 100, which is the highest level in the game right now currently, what am I getting for this level 100? If I'm going to get a gun max, what am I getting for this gun being maxed? And that's where we tie into camos. You know, right now there's three variations for ranking up your gun to max level. At level 50, you get bronze. At level 75, you get silver. And at level 100, you get gold. And during the past two weekends, they have been doing double XP on your weapons. So it kind of goes in, you know, quick, you know, you play a couple of games, you get the gun gold, but what are you getting for being, you know, for, for achieving this? You're getting nothing. And the challenges, oh my God, are they so non-existent? There's not a challenge to get your gun gold. It's just literally using the gun and getting it gold it's all, all the way from level zero to level 100. That is it. That is all you're doing is just using the gun over and over and over and over and over again until you get it gold super boring super not thought out there's no thought process there there's no development there there's nothing to be done there and as a first person shooter you you should look forward to putting challenges in the game i'm sorry we already know and not even from games like call of duty because they're not the first to do it yo snipers make a challenge with long shots you unlock a camo SMGs make a, a, a camo challenge with getting close kills or close quarter combat kills, point blank kills, whatever you want to call it. You unlock a camo. ARs make a challenge where, oh, the, I don't know, you don't reload the whole mag and get three kills. You get a camo. There's so much you can do there. And it wasn't done. It wasn't done for a full release game that we've waited all this time for from Ubisoft nothing is done and i have to shave off a 0.5 i have to and going from that leading on from that let's talk about more of the gameplay options right or as far as more into the game like basic things that should be in a quote-unquote competitive first person shooter right there is no shooting range in this game and i know upon 
making this video today there is but on day one release there was not a shooting range so i tied it in still only because you guys had time you had a closed beta you had an open beta you waited months and then dropped another open beta and then waited a whole nother month to drop the game you've had time to add things like a a basic shooting range you know and the reason why i have to take off another 0.5 for this and i don't know if i stated before with the camo that's another 0.5 when you have a competitive shooter you need things like a shooting range how are we going to test out builds how are we going to test out certain shooting mechanics recoil on the gun with a certain attachment if there's no shooting range there's no way to test it unless i load into a whole game that's probably already played, you know, it's already a match that started, and I'm supposed to play around with the gun. We are not in 2012, 2013, we are in 2024, that should be a staple for every first person shooter, especially when you consider your game competitive. You have a trial ranked mode, so you, you're aiming to be competitive as far as this title goes. Why is there not a shooting range game one? Oh, sorry, day one. Stemming off from that, because I just took off a 0.5 for the shooting range. I got to get a whole point from you. Because today, just like I mentioned, shooting range is now in the game two weeks later. So I took off a 0.5. I'll give you half a point back. Why the fuck would you release a game without private match? A first person shooter without private match. What the fuck? Who the fuck thought that was an, a good idea? There's no scrims happening. There's no competitive matches happening. The only GB or, or checkmate gaming challenges that you can do currently are kill races. Do, do you hear that? Do you understand that? In a 6v6 competitive first person shooter, motherfuckers are doing kill races. That's one point taken off. And, and, and I just have to tie back to Call of Duty because this game before release, they had a big Twitter thing going on about a 10k tournament with people from Call of Duty, known people from Call of Duty, Karma, TB, Aches, people are, that are known in the Call of Duty competitive scene. They hosted a 10k tournament. How are you guys not implementing these simple things into the game? Private match should be a staple for a first person competitive shooter. It mind boggles me. I don't know how much you guys are going to let that affect you or, or even think about that. But I'm going to leave things at this. This is my first rated series. Hopefully you guys like those intro clips. Hopefully you guys like the way that I put everything as far as rating it. And there is one thing that I did forget to mention in the very beginning of the video. The desync and lag, right? The lag compensation. We've dealt with that before in the past as far as like Black Ops 2. You know, again, games that are so far in the past, right? Games that we remember and we wish they remastered. This game had a huge problem with it in the beginning of the release of the beta. The closed beta, open beta. I mean, you were dying way after a fucking corner or a wall. But they did improve it. So I was going to take off a point five. But upon playing the game for about, I think I have like 40 hours logged. I'll give it another point, you know, just to save it from this fucking horrible review that it had from me, obviously. But yeah, that's where I'm at with things. I don't see it changing unless they change it like tonight or tomorrow morning. But if you fucked with the video, make sure you leave a like. If you didn't, suck a dick. And I'm out of here, you're...